Welcome to the Go Procast, where we invite business doers who are changing lives by sharing their stories, their strategies and tactics, and who bravely talk about their failures that actually led to their biggest successes. Now it's time to Go Pro with Jeremy Torres. Hey everybody, welcome to the Go Procast. And like the entry said, I'm Jeremy Torres, your host, and I'm bringing on business doers who are telling their stories and talking about their stories, how they got to where they are in business and life. And we're going to mix and show how you aren't one thing or the other. You're the kind of collection of your days. And today I'm excited because this is my very first episode where I'm interviewing a professional person, a professional speaker, professional business person, professional author. And I want to tell you right now, I'm a little nervous. So if you hear it, it's an excited nervous. Here is Amber Hurdle. She is a professional speaker. She's been uh, teaching, coaching, uh, advising people on brand and on something called uh, Predictive Index Certified partners to us. She's a predictive index certified. We're going to get into that. I'm most excited though, to talk to her just about her backstory, but as well as her book, because she is an author like me. And uh, we're going to talk about that and a lot of stuff. So without further ado, let's bring in my friend, Amber Hurdle. Welcome. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited that you're doing a podcast and that the whole world gets you like we get you behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get a lot because I'm uh, fumbling and bumbling and uh, just like the guys uh, who used to do the Monday Night Football, right? When he's uh, <laughs> talking about the football players, stumbling, bumbling right through the podcast. But that's OK, because if I was perfect today, I wouldn't have anywhere to go. So. <laughs> And nobody would like you. Nobody oh, likes God. perfect people. Everybody <laughs> likes to pet the winning horse until the horse has won too many times. Ah, that's interesting. So mm -hmm. uh, first things first, kind of like the whole uh, point of the uh, podcast is just a bit of background about yourself. I know I kind of stumbled through an intro or, or um, uh, introduction, trying to do some tech stuff, showing your website and stuff. But just tell us a little bit about yourself. And I, I kind of uh, hate when people do that to me, but it's my first time, so I'll learn. Okay. Well, um, I think a very important thing to know about me is that I am a total nerd. I am a nerd. Um, and I love studying human behavior. I love um, psychoanalytics. I love science and everything that I do when it comes to like branding and marketing and all that stuff that is generally considered like super sexy and fun. Like I back with scientific validation and that's what informs the strategy. So that's probably the first thing you need to know from a professional standpoint. From a personal standpoint, I mom so hard. <laughs> so <laughs> I am a, um, a mom to all adult children. So I have a 25 year old daughter and that well, I'm sure we're going to get into that part um, because my Botox is good, but it ain't that good, brother. You're so young. Um, I know that about you. Very young. And then I have an almost 19 year old who um, just left me as an empty nester and he's in college and I see him a lot. And then um, I have a, a stepdaughter who um, has made me a Gigi. And so I have um, granddaughters and a third granddaughter on the way. So um, yeah, so I'm, that's kind of my life. And I'm a friend. And as you know, I, I love good food. <laughs> yes, you are a friend. We met in Vegas at a, at a convention and we shared some great food and more importantly, some great time. And you that's are great. a giver a hundred percent. So I'm going to unpack the nerd the analytics and is that kind of where i alluded to uh -huh. something i read was the predictive index certified partner because i'm also a nerd i'm an excel guy uh, everyone uh -huh. says i know excel and i said okay well, on a scale of one to ten where are you about a seven most people are about a two you you're know, like because hold my it beer so, it's just so capable you know there's so uh -huh. much stuff you could do with it and uh, i think i'm a four or five really and uh, i blow people away so uh but what is a predictive index certified partner and how do you roll that into your, your branding and your consulting sure. services? Well, it's one of, um, of four tools actually that I use and I use this particular um, assessment. It's a behavioral assessment to identify, well, we, it, it's got three parts. So maybe that's the, the most important part. 
So we want to measure the innate needs of an individual so that we can then predict what drives their behavior. So we can predict their behavior. Mm. And, and why does that matter? Well, I can tell you that um, <laughs> if you want me to be a bean counter or you want me to be behind a computer all day long and not interact with people, like that's not going to end well. If you're going to put my um, finger on the nuke, like I'm a risk taker, you don't want that. You don't want me to do that either. And if you want somebody who's going to be patient and do methodical things day over day, you know, really not ever have any competing priorities as Taco Tuesday every Tuesday, you take the same way home to work every every mm -hmm. day. That's not me either. And so if you put me in a position where the needs of that particular job conflict with how I behave, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to be miserable. You're not going to be motivated and you're going to bail. Boom. Yeah. So why I use this tool is we, we create the job profile. So that happens in an organization. And then we, then we have everyone who applies for that job take the behavioral assessment. We overlap that onto the, the job profile and it's either a match or it's not this there there's no unconscious bias in this there's no overt bias in this it's either you you want to do the job or you don't want to do the job and so that's the first piece and then there's a or the first and second piece and the third piece is the cognitive assessment and that's really the secret sauce because the cognitive doesn't measure it doesn't measure your intelligence okay when you think of iq think of a sponge the cognitive assessment really measures how quickly that sponge can absorb. And that's vitally important when we're hiring right now. Mm. And all of this PS is related to employer brands. Do we want to have an employer brand where people want to come to work for us and stay working for us? So when you measure if somebody can catch on quickly or not, you're not leaving behind the millennials and the Gen Z's who maybe don't have the job experience to backfill some of these baby boomer positions that are, they're leaving 10,000 a day. I mean, mm -hmm. they're leaving in droves. They haven't been on the planet long enough to have the experience, but what if they're able to quickly to catch on to things, then you know they're a behavioral fit, they're a fit for the team, because that's the other thing, we, we make sure that we assess the entire team. And and when we measure their, their head, their heart, and their briefcase, we know how quickly they can catch on, and then we can have faith that this is a person that's going to stick with us and truly enjoy their work. I know that was a really long description, but that's the process. That's okay. Because as you're talking, I make, I always make a lot of notes, but so there's a, a lot to, that you're doing there. Uh, one of the things I do talk about here in my business is the stat, the strategies and tactics. So that's all kind of part of your, your system. And then you have the process um, with your, your personal branding and then going down to employees and then going to the business. So you have like a three tier yes. branding system there. Um, that what are the tactics though that you use though for each of those to help a company or a person build that brand well you know you 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 framed it perfectly so i go in and immediately we start talking about the personal brands of the leaders not just the senior leaders but every single leader hmm. because if we trust you if we trust who you are and you're consistent with how you show up and who you say you are is who is how you act <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is not always your, the case. Your actions are so loud. I can't hear you talking and that's good or bad. All right. Bing, bing, bing. Yes. <laughs> um, so we work on that first and foremost so that we can build, we can build the environment of trust and people know, like, I want to follow this people. And when you have a strong personal brand, you're, you're able to get to the end goal of leadership and that's influence. So you're, mm. you're creating an environment based on how you naturally show up where people are inspired. And, and the other thing too, is when you have a strong personal brand that requires self-awareness. And when you're self-aware, then you can see and harvest the greatness in others because either you're like me and I can see that, or you're not like me. And that provides a contrast. I need to understand that how it's not, it's not due unto others as you want to be treated. That right. That's the golden rule. The better ones, platinum rule. Bam. We all know this. I say that, but then like people well, are like, oh, I've never thought no. of it this way. Yeah. Treat others the way they want to be treated. And so yeah. that's why the psychoanalytic tools, and I, again, I use multiple. I use How to Fascinate by Sally Hogshead. I've, I'm one of her, you know, I've been with her for forever. Um, and that helps us identify, well, how does the world see you at your best, at your most influential? So we might bring that in, but let's just mm. say we're just using predictive index. We understand like, what are my needs? How, how does that motivate my behavior? How do I complement 
that on my team so that I can offset some of my less ideal characteristics for the job that has to get done. And once you have strong leaders, now those leaders are feeding a team that is being seen for who they are. They're being edified. They're being put into positions that they are naturally designed to do. Therefore, they are happy. And then you have a nice, well-rounded team and you show that team through the, through the data that, hey, just because this person challenges you on things doesn't mean that they're a killjoy. It just means that you're not the kind of person that does the 10-point check on your parachute before you jump off the cliff. Right. And isn't it nice that they want to save your life? That right. they're looking out for you? And that's when what self-awareness at- is. The big part is also self-calibration because your life's not linear, right? You've got ups and downs. And if you are self-aware, you go, wait a minute, I'm, I'm not myself right now. I have to take a step back. It's not you, it's me. And I know that. That's so- oh, I tell my team all the time and I told my marketing company today, I'm like, listen, if I'm the bottleneck, scream at me. <laughs> Amber, right. you're being the bottleneck because I get, I've got a majillion, I've got listeners. I have, you know, audience members, my inbox is like crazy train all the time. <laughs> and so it's not that I'm wanting to ignore people, but sometimes it just is so much. So yeah, it's, it's creating an environment where everybody gets to show up as themselves and that's joy yeah. an environment where I don't feel stressed out because I'm being asked to do things that I'm not designed to do that brings stability. So now we have strong personal brands leading a strong employer brand that is able to recruit and retain top talent. And then guess what happens? Well, they probably serve their customers pretty well and clients, right? They probably make ravenous fans out of them. And just think about because it's not just, it's just, it's the whole customer experience. It's not just customer service. So customer Hmm. services, I'm interacting with the customer. Customer experiences from the time I am introduced to your brand to the time I am, you know, experiencing the product or the service that I bought. That's the whole experience. So if you have people who are staying and giving a little bit of discretionary effort to hit a deadline to make sure the product actually gets shipped and it's not a delay, then how do you think that customer is going to feel versus another company where they're like, eh, whatever, we'll just do it tomorrow. Right. Uh, So it's all the difference in the world, especially when they call in or they have to have follow up or even better, but they don't have to call in and they get called, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, it's a, a timely and consistent manners and, um, and, and they're happier that way. I mean, this, it, the science is in, like you said, yeah. you're a science girl and that that's definitely in, uh, so this is kind of the strategies, tactics that lead to this stuff. And, and we always talk about, um, your, the drive. And so identifying the, their whys, is that part of your predictive index too? Is kind of, you know, you can't have a drive because motivation is temporary, right? Oh, yeah. Nobody, everyone, you can motivate anyone, but that's temporary. Zig Ziglar says it's like taking baths. They're great, but you got to do them every day. Every you know, day. <laughs> better to find the drive, you know, what drives you is your whys and just teaching how people how to dig down in those whys. And that's all yeah, part then- of it. There's times too. I mean, like you, you and I are business owners. I I need to profile you, uh, remind me. And, <laughs> and I would dare to say that you're probably like me because most entrepreneurs are, we're, we're, we're more risk takers. You know, the rule book's not really for us. Like it's more of a suggestion book. We can follow our own rules, but we're not exactly designed to like fall into step, which means that we're not necessarily always the best at dotting every I, crossing every T. And so we need to surround ourselves with people. Mm-hmm. Like I call it bubble wrapping. So we're not weak. <laughs> Jeremy, you're not weak. I'm not weak. Nobody's weak. Okay. We're badasses. Can I say that? We're <laughs> we bad man pajamas. Sorry. <laughs> um, but we have things that are less helpful about how we're designed for the job that needs to get done. And so we need to bubble wrap that. Fine China is meant to sit on a table and have food on it. But yeah. what do we do when we take it out of its designed function and we ship it across the country? Right. We bubble wrap it. Yeah. So if you know what you need to bubble wrap, then you know, like, I need to put a process in place. I need to bring a person in something needs to help sister out because I got to run a business and you know, the IRS expects me to dot my eyes across my teeth. Yeah. And I was the bull in the China shop for a long time. In fact, uh, <laughs> my shops always took on my personality and that infected them, it affected yeah. and infected them. Mm. So when they went out in the field and are uh, acting with the, with the uh, inspectors and with the city folks and they were coming off too aggressive and I had to go, Whoa, that's because that's me. Uh-huh. So I had to change that whole personality and insulate myself from them and, you know, act a certain way, put somebody else in between as a buffer 
So yes. basically that he was my bubble wrap. That's Actually right. it was there's a woman named Donna who was you know, that that person. So like your integrator, right? If you've read Traction or what the heck is EOS or Rocket Ship. So speaking of reading, I want to jump real quick to your book, Bob, The Bombshell Businesswoman. By the way, it's prominently displayed. Yay. These are my friends behind me. I have one little book. I was in an interview uh, yesterday being interviewed uh, by a meeting speaker. She goes, I, I, you know, that you have 10 books behind you doesn't really affect. And I'm like, no, I have one. <laughs> Don't give me credit. Those are my buddies. Um, I'm lucky <laughs> enough to have authors who are friends. And you're right there, uh, your, your center. And, uh, uh, and I'm proud of you, and, and it's a great book. Tell me about how it became, um, what made you think of writing it, and what is the crux of this book? Yeah, so um, it, it when I first left Gaylord Hotels Marriott, um, when Marriott bought us, I oversaw the, um, uh, the rebrand, the internal rebrand of that. And I was like, I'm going to be a hardcore executive coach and I'm only going to work in corporate America because that was my mindset. Like, I'm, you know, that's, that was my life every day. Yeah. And, and so I did. And then these companies were like, okay, well, can you put together a training program? I'm like, of course I can. And then they were like, well, can you speak for an hour on a stage and we'll pay a bunch of money? I'm like, really? Like memorize something? So I did. I've always spoken to like market, but I've never spoken like keynote speaker like you and I do now. Mm. And so that's, it, that's interesting. This, that question was on my list. How did you become the, this is the two birds, one stone. There you go. <laughs> We're very efficient on, on this podcast. So, um, I've, and again, I've, I've, I've spoken my first speech meet. I was in like the sixth grade. So it's, I was on the debate team in college. It's not that I, I haven't spoken, but like actually, you know, design a content that in the form of an hour, all that. So anyway, so this is all going on. And then I had a bunch of women, some who are my friends, some who just kind of casually knew me. They're like, Amber, I really need your help with my marketing. You're killing it. Like you left and like, here's this, you know, you're really doing great. Um, and, and so I either what it's going to, I was either going to have to like make helping people my part-time job, or I was going to have to do something more significant. So mm. I called my friend, Amy Atkinson, look her up. She's amazing. She's like the PR goddess of Nashville. And, um, and, and I was like, Hey, if I do like do an all day boot camp, can I pay you to like, come and like talk about marketing? And she's like, yeah, sure. And I, I, I called my friend, Lucy Lee, who started leadership Wilson. And I was like, Hey, if, if I have you come in and, and talk about like really time management and things like that, would, would you be, she's like, yeah, sure. So I did all the parts that like business building parts uh structured processes that sort of thing and they did their parts i had somebody come in to talk about the financial side of things and and it went really really well and so i was like wow they're really hungry for this i was like well gosh i need to i need to do more of this so i should probably write a book but that didn't seem right either so like everything i do everything backwards so i started an <laughs> online too. program i <laughs> know See, I'm telling you, I know your personality profile already. <laughs> um, and so uh, typically what happens is like you, um, you do a podcast, you build an audience, then you do an online program and then you do live events, but live events, like I used to have a celebrity event planning company. So live events made the most sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I did an eight week program called the bombshell business Boot Camp. It was live. We pulled from five counties in middle Tennessee, people I had no clue who they were showed up. And I was like, wow, this is really a need. And I tend to, um, obviously with the word bombshell, which I redefine to mean bold, brave, unwaveringly confident female. I love because it. Because I believe when a bombshell walks in, it's not because she's like remarkably beautiful. It's because she walks in and she knows herself. She's confident. She knows who she is. And that's what turns heads. So energy, I named it that. Right? It's Yes, Jeremy, it's the energy. Thank, thank you for that. Thank you for knowing that. <laughs> Um, and so that went really, really well. And we kind of had like an online component and then we just kept building on that. So I was like, well, I still don't feel like I'm, I know a five County radius and what the problems of these women are, but do I know right. enough to truly write a book for the world? No, I don't. So let's start a podcast. I've been in a podcast community. I was one of John Lee Dumas's first clients ever, his founding 50 members of his first product he ever did, of which is entrepreneur on fire. For those of you who don't know, um, he and Kay Erickson and and so I was like, okay, well, I can do this whole podcast thing. As you know, it's not easy, but I figured it out with my friends. So <laughs> then I started the podcast and I'm telling you, and I, I, I'm so, I cannot wait for this for you, Jeremy, the emails, the direct messages, mm -hmm. the, the letters in the mail, like 
people telling me, I listened to this episode, I applied this, and this is the result that I got. I was just like dumbfounded. So I knew my ideal customer, Anne, I knew her like inside and out. And so I finally was able to write my book and people said, and I'm not saying this to pat myself on the back. I'm, I want you to understand the vital importance of branding and truly mm -hmm. understanding your customer. I got letters in the mail, all kinds of stuff saying like, I read this page, da, da, da. I was in tears. Mm, it's like yeah. you wrote the book just for me. And I had men email me. It's like, Hey, I bought this for my wife who's sitting there. I thumbed through it and I started reading it. And it's like, you wrote it just for me. And I'm like, well, Bob, yeah, I guess you could be a Bob show. Right. <laughs> because it's, you know, I use, I use the language and we have high heels and lipstick and that kind of thing, but like, really it's, it's business advice for anybody. But I also tell my story and I tell my story from stage and you probably heard me say it in Las Vegas, like I got knocked up at 16. So, and I'm here, I'm, I'm doing what I do. And I'm, and I, I consult with CEOs and I talk about billion dollar problems and, and I consult with small businesses and yeah. people's lives. And I got knocked up at 16. So whatever is hanging <laughs> you up, whatever yeah. you're saying, I can't do this because that happened to me. Like it's beyond. no such thing. Right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have, um, hard stories and that's, it kind of led perfectly. Although I had one more question to ask you, but I sure. want to, because you open that door though, one of the main things that I will not let anyone go, I don't say here are these five questions I ask everybody, but I do ask for the time that your biggest and in, in failure for you might not be the right word if you're going to use the example or the story of your pregnancy at such young age because that's not a failure, obviously. But oh, no, I got better a tough time. That. But I, you know, what is the thing that happened in your life that you thought was going to define your life in the negative way, in the hard way, make it, you know, world of crap but it actually led to the biggest successes and where you are now and you wouldn't be this without that mm -hmm. well so on the predictive index i'm a maverick which is basically a train wreck on paper um, we're not supposed to say things like that but i can say it because of me and i'm like a wide maverick so like volume all the way up like the closer mm. to the midline it is kind of like maybe <laughs> like piano concerto maverick i'm like acd maverick so um but i had so many learned behaviors because I had to keep this human being alive when I was still a child myself. And, and so you have to put processes in place and you have to overcome some of the things that might trip you up. Um, so I, I do feel like teen motherhood taught me so much about life and how to position myself, how to brand myself, mm -hmm. how to influence effectively so that I could pick up another shift at the Applebee's. So yeah. I could, you know, get a job that requires a college degree, but I didn't have one, but I worked my butt off. Like nobody can argue about my work ethic. I worked right. four jobs at I, one point. Absolutely. Amen to that. You're a hard worker. Well, I'm a workaholic, but, uh, <laughs> you, know, I, you know, because you have to use what you got. My favorite, that Jason Aldean song, my favorite song is use what you, I use what I got. That's all I got. I was homeless yeah. at 17. I have a 10th, 10th grade education. There you go. But no one outworks the kid. That's right. No one. And that's First what wins in, last in the end. Out. I still that's work 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. But yeah. I, I happen to have a get to life now. So I yes. get to work and, and, 5 to 9. And that's it. Like I will work 70 hours a week on my own time with my own flexibility. So I don't have to work 50 for somebody else on their time. So, mm, yeah. But all that said, you know, was it a poor decision that led to my pregnancy? Yes. But as my mom told me when I told her I was pregnant, there's nothing bad about this. There's, this is only joy. Babies are miracles and that's what we're going to focus on. And so that's what we did. But as you are working for jobs and you're not sleeping two nights out of every week and you get no help and the father's not involved and you know, you're not getting child support and, mm -hmm. and it's just like, it's just drama and truly just being separated from my child and always working and not feeling like I get to have the influence I want as a mother in her life. Um, cause she was always with a family member while I worked that led me to make really poor decisions. And, mm -hmm. and I have to be careful with this to this day. Cause again, these are limiting beliefs, learned behaviors, things from our past that bubble up. And, you know, it, it's like, you're not going to get a chance to hurt me because that's, I'm going to hurt you. That's a fire one. I got you. You're melting the walls on that one. Yes. <laughs> yes I love this. You're going to have to teach me all your tricks here when you come to Nashville for NSA influence next year. Um, so so yeah, so I, I did some bad things to myself and I made poor choices and I hung out with the wrong people and I did things to my body that were not the best. And, um, 
And I just remember waking up one morning and saying, you know, God, you're going to have to take all of this from me because I'm, I'm weak and I'm tired and I'm exhausted <laughs> and I'm abusing myself. And, um, and, and really my number one priority is to be a good mom to my daughter. And I think I'm going to screw that up. Like I'm kind of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde at this point, yeah. like perfect yeah. mom here, but then like over here when she's not there, like I'm over here abusing myself. Yeah. And, and, and that's and, got an aggregate effect on, you know, the time you spent, their attitude with her, your, your, your energy and, you know, you're, you're oh causing gosh, all sorts of other chaos. Yeah. yeah. I was so what, what, what turned it around? What was the, was it one thing? Was it just time? Was it just wisdom? It was, it, and, and I'm, listen, I'm not a religious person. I'm a very spiritual person. But in that moment, when I asked God to take hmm. it from me, he did. And, wow. um, and I just have to say that, like, ever since, it's not that I'm perfect. It's not that I've made all great decisions, yeah. but it was just like a switch. And then I was like, okay, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It might be a freight train coming at me. Like, I don't know when this <laughs> is going to get better, but I just kept on and I, I got the bad people out of my life. And so I'm fiercely, fiercely protective of who I allow in my life. And I, you, on my social media, you'll see me beating this drum. Yeah. You have to surround yourself with good people like Jeremy. That's why Jeremy's my friend. Cause he's a good person. He's good at you, you. It raises the bar. And I just kept working and I started being more strategic and, um, and eventually one day it was just, okay. Just, it got better. And then you up level and, and a book to read. Um, and I read it every single year is the big leap because it talks about your upper limit problems. So we're always like kind of swirling up and then we're elevating our lives. And then you get to a point where you're like, Ooh, I'm about to make a big leap. I'm about to get to this whole next level. And then the fit hits the shan and you yeah. start self-destructing because you're not comfortable with that level of success yet. And so who wrote, who wrote that big leap? Ah, oh, the big leap. Hold on. Let me, I, I'll tell you, I, I should, um, why can't I? <laughs> Uh, don't worry. It's okay. Keep going. Gay Hendrix. I can't believe I couldn't remember that. Okay. Now what, I can find you again. Gay Hendrix. What is it? Gay Hendrix is his spell. name. Um, H E N D R I C K S. And, um, and he's got great interviews and all kinds of content on, on the interwebs as well. So, um, all right. I mean, like, I'm obviously him... he's been like on Oprah and you know, all that kind of stuff. Cause he's genius. Yeah. I'm giving him a, 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 a crawl. Cause it meant that much to you. So I want everyone to know about it. Yes. Yes. Love it. Yeah. And I, and I do, and I read it every single year because the velocity in which I am and in this world too, I mean, like one stage can change everything for you. And one book, yeah. like the book changed so much for me. Um, and then you go on a national book tour and you're on TV shows all over the place. And, and hear me when I say I live in a small town <laughs> and, um, when you live in a small town, and there are so many people here who love me and I love them. And is, that's why I live here still. But there are also people in a small town who think small. Mm -hmm. And then when you're yep. out there playing big, they don't get it and they don't want you to. And so yep. the things that people say about you when you're playing big in a world that is small can be hurtful. And so yep. you have to set your mind. And this might be your family. This might be your mm -hmm. own inner dialogue that like, I'm afraid to outshine my siblings or I, it's not oh. mine. I have mm -hmm. five siblings. They don't care. Right. Yeah. We're, we're all like, we're all rock stars. Yeah. But, um, but you know, this happens in my coaching. Like I'm afraid to outshine my spouse. I'm afraid to outshine my parents, my neighbors, whatever that somebody in the office next to me. And you were designed to get on this planet and serve humanity in a way that is extraordinary. Yeah, you're to, to your limits. So I was gonna say that doesn't sound very bombshelly, right? That sounds, you know, you're those self-limiting beliefs. And when you're in a small town like that, it's hard maybe to get the five aggregate people who are because you are the aggregate of the five people that you hang around the most, is what they say. Right. So Ron. if other people are live listening, it's hard to find five people in a yeah. small town. I, I live in a very big town, but it's a small big town. It's surprisingly yeah. small for uh, Fort Lauderdale is a, a very small big town. But it's not a problem, and especially now with the internet. I, I hardly yeah. leave my house anymore. I mean, I, 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 you're, you know, we speak. We, we, I follow you the way, I, the way I lived on LinkedIn, the way I lived on you, the way I live on YouTube. Well, we get each other every people. Wednesday. Yeah. Like all through COVID, thank God for the mastermind that, or maybe that's not the right word for it, for the for the group that we, you uh -huh. and I are affiliated with. 
I don't know if I would have made it through COVID yeah. like without that oxygen mask every single week of, of like-minded people who are here to serve. Yeah. And that's, that's I, you know, I just joined that's when I uh, met uh, everyone in July, but uh, it is, I can see how that's a life um, saver tossed to you. I, that's how I wrote my book was during COVID. I've traveled 45 weeks a year for 10 years. Wow. So I was stuck in my house with my family and they had a meeting one day and they said, uh, we don't work for you. Stop <laughs> what to do. What are you doing? You're just sitting here yelling. At us and you've got a rock so. star wife, so you better keep her happy. Woo. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Uh, she is a good one. To, uh, you got to keep the good one. So that's right. Um, so that's great. So, uh, I got, uh, we have, I think we went through a lot, but the one question I have to get to is mm -hmm. you have the best name for your program. The best name is the velvet machete. You have to explain that one because that's the one I've been saving for last because I couldn't wait to hear the story behind it. Yeah. So long, long ago in the land of my twenties, I was a personal trainer and, um, and I had, I had, a, I was both like the menopausal woman queen and then also like the retired or close to retirement man trainer. Like those were the people who loved me best. And so talk about ideal profiles. And one of my close to retirement men came in and I would check his food journal and I would, we would work out. And I, I was just like, you know, here's the thing. You cannot eat a ribeye four nights a week and drink the amount of bourbon. And listen, I love me some brown water, Yeah, but you cannot drink that amount of bourbon and think that you're going to outrun what we do here in the gym. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And you said that you want to be able to play with your grandkids and live a long, healthy life. And that's why you're spending your money with me. So either you're going to do that or I'm going to fire you because the last thing that I need is for you to walk around town telling everybody that I'm yeah. your personal trainer and you have no results. That's not yeah, you happening. Know how, you know how many, how few people know that you can fire your customer? Yes. You know? <laughs> like you are my advertisement. So if you come in here and just say, yeah. Hey, I want to, you know, I like your company and I, I want to stay active. Great. That's your goal. But if you're going around town saying, I'm trying to hit these goals and I'm working out with Amber, but you're yeah. not doing your part. Like, <laughs> bye. That's yeah. not working. Yeah. So he looks at me and he goes, you are a velvet machete. Wow. You are so straight with me, but I like it. Yeah, okay. that one's <laughs> there. Like, you go. <laughs> okay. Love so it. So it kind of stuck. Ever all, all of my clients started calling me that. Then it then it evolved. And then when it became um, you know, speaker podcast or all that kind of stuff, it just stuck and it, it really is my philosophy because it's about it's the the, the machete cuts to the chase. Mm -hmm. it, it hits you in the face, it grabs your attention in our very attention deficit world. It, it's only got in. one purpose. Everyone knows what it is. That's right. You know. But the velvet wraps the message in a way that's appealing to that wow. distinct audience. So the velvet could change depending on who we are. And sometimes we do need to be heavy on the velvet, on the machete. And sometimes yes. we need to lean into that velvet. But most of the time, it's the balance that's going to help us win. And that's not just with others. That's also with ourselves. So can you can you be confident in who you are and also show yourself compassion? Because when you have that magic mix, now you're an effective leader. Outstanding. That is crazy. And and, it's, and I knew it was going to be great, that story. And it was, it didn't, it didn't disappoint. Um, you know, I could go on forever because you've got so much stuff, but I know that we humans these days have a very short attention span. We do. So I want to uh, ask you to, to tell us what you're doing, where we could find you, where, you know, how can we support you? How can I support you? Lay it on us. Okay. Well, Jeremy, you just keep being in, in that top group of people where we, you know, feed off of each other and elevate and, and that sort of stuff. So that's how you could personally help me. Um, what we're working on right now is, um, you know, we, we do things for both genders. I have audience with both genders, but what we have found is that um, we are, we will soon be launching a coaching program specifically for high powered women who may work in a male dominated culture that doesn't necessarily mean industry or just it, it might just be that they don't feel completely empowered to be as powerful as they are and I, and i'll tell you jeremy i scare some men you're a very <laughs> secure man a very self-aware secure man so we could be friends but when you have this kind of um energy it's hard in the world it's hard to make female friends. It's hard to be really who you are in the workplace and not get the B word label. Mm -hmm. And so those people come to me and I help them balance their velvet machete. Wow. Yeah. I think you could probably do it for, uh, I mean, it's all, it's, we're people, 
you know, we, mm -hmm. it's all chemicals, water, you know, oh, electricity. Yeah. And, and I have tons of male CEOs I work with. Yeah, but we, I had the same problem, you know, I, I guess it would be called dick resting face. Uh, <laughs> you know, I just always looked pissed off. Right. But every time someone talked to me, I'd perk right up. How are you doing? Great. You know, one of my, ta my taglines is just great. I always say great for a lot of reasons. Number one is I don't really know why you know my business. I'm not going to tell you anything that's going on. It's not great. But when I wasn't talking, I just looked like a bulldog. Like, and so everyone just thought I was a jerk. And uh, actually, it's probably good to keep people away from me. But uh, I think it was a survival, mm -hmm. you know, result as growing up in the streets like I did. Yeah. You know, you kind of yeah, because jerk is not the first thing that comes to mind when I think about you, Jeremy. I've, I've like, evolved. I've evolved, and one of the things that helped me was uh, I've been extremely lucky at finding great women. My, I have, my kids have the best mother. Uh, you know, we didn't work out in the long run, but we're still best friends. Her husband's my best friend, and then my That's wife. Awesome. You know, I just I've been very lucky to find women who go, hey, you know, you clean up well. Let's just see if you can walk it now. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you yeah. can clean someone up, but if they don't act and don't walk the walk, they're you know that you're never going to be happy. And you know, they inspire me, so I want to be good for them and yeah. be good examples for the kids. And and you are you're a great example. Your story, I love it. I loved it the second I met you. The second I you know met you on video, and the second I met you in person in Vegas. And uh, I know we're going to have a long, illustrious walk together in our, in our right. industry. That's and right. I met Jeremy, y'all, and I was like, here's the thing. You're coming to dinner, and then also you're joining this group. So welcome. Yeah, yeah, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> uh, and you had me at the Beatles, uh, you know, thing that you went to. Uh, what was that? How was that concert anyway? That The Beatles, remember there was like a weird Beatles string thing? Oh, yes, yes. Um, it was amazing. It was this whole candlelit um yeah. Beatles and um and Bach Bach and the Beatles it was a, a string wow. it was amazing yeah. so wonderful Nashville just has so many fun things to do oh it's our favorite place it's our it's our Christy and I love it there we're going to be there in July for for the next uh NSA That's right. convention I'm all signed up so we're looking forward so let's uh I guess nothing else to say but thank you Thank you for, for coming. having me. I don't really know how to wrap this up other than what an honor <laughs> well, what thank, do you yes. want your audience to do uh, you know, I just want them to follow uh, everything. We're going to put some stuff down in the comments uh, on YouTube. So all the stuff that you're talking about, the book, the links, the programs that you have to offer, get those to me. We'll put them in the links. If it's a podcast, get a hold of me at jeremytours.com. Um, and by the way, my last name is spelled to risk and my blood type is B positive. So how can you go wrong? <laughs> I love get it. a hold of me. Go pro every single day. You have a choice to make. The only choice is to go pro. Thanks. I'd like to thank Amber Hurdle for being my very first interview guest. I know that uh, I promised Corey Disson he'd be the first, and I'm sorry, but uh, Amber acted at the speed of instruction and she booked today, and I just uh, I had to get her on because uh, she's so busy in the world of, of public speaking, consulting, coaching. Couldn't pass up the opportunity. Thank you, Amber. Please check out Amber's information. She's at amberhurdle.com, Velvet Machete Leadership. And the book is The Bombshell Businesswoman. Uh, catch her on LinkedIn, all the social media. Uh, she's amazing. And if you'd like to get a hold of me, you can take your phones out right now and just use your, just take your camera, throw it on the QR code there, and that will open up the thing to the right here. And it'll show you my phone number, my email, my LinkedIn, my YouTube channel. Um, everything that you need to know about me is all on there, all the websites. It's uh, by scans. And we will see you next time on the GoPro. <laughs>